Hi everyone, this is Hal and welcome to Travel Know How. On today's special, I'm just going to do something that is one of my favorite Polish food and that is called a zapakanki. Now, I first tried it when I was in Krakow and it was absolutely the most yummiest thing that I, you know, could imagine. Yeah, if you're ever in Krakow, I would highly recommend finding the Jewish Quarter and going around there. I'm sure if you ask a few of the local people, they'll know where it is and they'll redirect you. And for something as cheap as around, whoa, what I'd say, anything between three Australian dollars to five Australian dollars, you get a really good um, zapakanki. Now, what is it? It's like an open bread um, pizza. It, we don't really have it in Australia, but uh, in Poland, it's a, a very um, popular snack in some way, but the way I make it, uh, it's gonna be very filling. So first off, you need a baguette, which I bought from my local um, supermarket, and uh, sliced it in half. Now, the basis of this is usually um, bread lined with butter or a uh, tomato paste so i have got myself a tomato paste so it's uh, just really much a pasta jar uh, and i always look for one which has really chunky bits of tomato onion and garlic um, but it's up to you what you like to line it and most important thing as well that you need is mushroom now, I've already pre-sliced the mushroom. Um, uh, you're also going to need uh, butter. So I've got some butter and onion. So I'm gonna use about half an onion to cook it up. Uh, what else have we got for ingredients? Ah, yes, some Polish sausages. Now you can use ham or uh, any one of your meats but as I said similar to pizza so whatever you like in toppings lay it the way that you like it I am also going to use sweet corn uh, and I don't have any spring onions they use like, quite a lot of spring onions there and I've got the leek so I'll finally slice that and add it on top as garnish uh, I got spinach as well so baby spinach. I have also got some fresh garlic. So I chop up some garlic there and add it to the lot. And of course I've got some cheese. Whether you've got shredded cheddar or anything, I've got a thing here called Gouda. It melts well and it's not as salty as cheddar and it still works. Okay, so. Let's go through the process of how it works. Lined up a baking tray. As you can see with some foil and I put the loaf on top. And that will be ready and set aside for us to layer soon. Um, in the frying pan here, I have got a decent knob of butter. I reckon there's about uh, 100 grams there. Um, and some onions. So I'm gonna start uh, frying up the onions and browning them a bit. And once they get a bit brown, I will throw in the mushroom just to soften it up. Uh, and along with the garlic as well. So um, here we are over the bench. I've just chopped up the mushrooms and sliced them up. They're fairly large chunks, don't worry. Once they're cooked in the frying pan, they will shrink up quite a bit and be ready to layer up on the bread. As you can see, I'm just frying it up. Getting the onion to go a bit clear and the butter to all melt. It's not gonna take too long. I've got the um, thing on a non-stick frying pan and it's up pretty high. All right, so that's looking good. I'll start throwing in the mushrooms. Right, throw it 
down. There we go. Keep all moving. We'll come back to it and I'll show you how it looks once the mushroom has all started to cook through and absorb all that yummy butter and oh I better throw in a bit of uh, garlic as well so we'll right back to that so I forgot to mention uh, I've used about 200 grams of uh, button white mushrooms there I chose the largest one that was at the shops Gotta crush a few knobs of garlic and add it to the mushroom now you just crush uh, as many or as little as you like but uh, uh, about four or five uh, cloves of garlic will uh, add a bit more flavor to the mushroom and onion You have it just added the garlic in with the mix the mushroom is wilting very well so we are now just literally cooking the garlic so it doesn't have too much of a bite and mixing it well there in and uh, it won't take too long now remember it's going to go into the oven and uh, cook further but this is just making sure all the ingredients are well and thoroughly cooked but we don't want it completely wilted because we know the mushrooms going to shrink heaps so something like that but then again if you like your mushrooms well cooked and wilted and even sauteed and charred you can go that far if you want but for me if it's already shrunk about half the size of what it is um, it's all right and that's looking really good so let's do a bit more all right and that is good enough and ready to be laid onto the bread. So while the mushroom, onion and the garlic is uh, sauteing away on the stove, I'm just going to quickly slice up the smoked sausage. Now, I really love the Polish smoked sausage in Poland here it is so yummy and I kid you not it's it's like smoked ham the flavor so permeates through this thing and um, I'm not too sure what it is but uh, if you go and ask for some smoked kielbasa I'm sure the deli or the meat aisle will help you out and uh, help you with what you might uh, need but it is so yummy and the smoke flavor out of this is really really great now I even use this stuff in soups as a base for the flavor along with the onions and other food all right so that's just a little bit there now you don't have to slice it up into small square bits um, that's just the way I prefer it on the zapakanki you can slice it in big chunks now remember there's only going to be so much space and we're going to load it up so much so each to their own how they like it tomato is so juicy and ripe this season as well I'm going to slice it up in half layer it up okay 
So that's that done and we're going to bring these ingredients over and start loading up our bread roll. Alright, so here I go layering up all the ingredients onto our baguette. Now I know a lot of people are going to cringe or say that's not the right way. But um, as I said, it's like a pizza. You make what you like and top it up with what you love to eat. And I'm going to layer it nice and thin. Just pour it on, spread it around. Ooh. It's a bit difficult to get the baguette evenly sliced, but if you can, all the other ingredients will sit on it a little bit better. Ooh. That looks good. Right. I guess this is something that uh, anyone can have, uh, they're vegan, they obviously don't put meat on. Uh, and yeah, I know if you like your garlic butter, you can add that on. This is me. Uh, like this. Okay, now the crucial and main ingredients of all zapatanki is the mushroom. So let's see if I can even spread on all of it. Put everything on. I guess I could have done with a slightly larger spoon. This will do. All the mushroom on there. Spread it out. Mm. Once again, your mushroom can be larger or smaller. You decide when you cut it up. Me, this just makes it a bit easier to layer it on. Excuse the pan while well, there. You might be missing out stuff, and I'll try to make it as beautiful as I can. Ooh, I tell you, the smell of this is absolutely so yummy. Even if you uh, had a sprig of rosemary and you could throw it in here when you make it. Uh, that would just add a little bit extra. So if you love your mushrooms, give this a try. Now, you know that the basis of Zapakanki is just that. We get with sauteed mushroom and some melted cheese over the top. They're gonna be a bit more lavish. I'm gonna be a bit more lavish really load it up. Now it's going to be a tricky balancing act. I am going to do my best. Not sorry about any of the uh, clanging noise. I'll try to switch it over to a spatula. Really get the last of the ingredients on. on the edge over there. That's looking good. What about the pan being in the way? Go. Okay, that's done. Put the pan aside.
Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle on some of the smoked sausages. Tell you it's a lot easier putting it on a homemade pizza than it is on a baguette because you just try and load up as much as you can with as little space as there is on the roll. Mm. Okay. I think that's an even mix. Alright, so also loaded up with some sweet corn. Okay. Can sweet corn. Now when you go to any one of the stores that sells that bakanki, you do get different variations like you would get at a pizza store. You can ask for different ingredients to be added or removed. Me, I'm just gonna load it up because I am hungry. Oh, I'm just going to lose a bit off the side. Now, I've already washed my hands, so it's nice and clean. Let's see if I can make this as picture perfect as I can. Alright, that'll do. A couple of lost toppings on the side won't hurt. Here, lay them on. And layer on the cheese. Now cut it nice and thin. Now I have to say, making this, you could use shredded cheddar on top but this is a bit more clean when it melts so that's the way I like it and on there a tomato on that side cheese that's thick okay now hold everything in place once it's cooking all right time to place it into the oven now I'm using a fan force electric oven. I'm going to put it in for 180 degrees Celsius at let's see, 20 minutes. So 180, 20 minutes, fan force, top and bottom. There we have it. I'll come and check it back in the last five minutes and we'll add a few more garnishes on top. There it is, it's in the oven. Cheese melting away. Coming up to the 15 minute mark now and the cheese looks so melted and grilled and yummy. Uh, I'm gonna take it out of the oven, just turn that off. Gonna make sure we have a nice thick tea towel. Now this is gonna be a bit tricky doing it with one hand. I'm just gonna open it up. Whoa! Grab the 
tray. Make sure I got a good grip. Whoa, this is so hot. Right, load it up there. I'm gonna add a few more garnishes. That make it look real yummy. So here we are. Tray out and um, add a few garnishes. A sprinkle of some finely chopped uh, leeks. Now the food chain that you go to and buy is up again. They'll probably load this up with heaps and heaps of fresh chives or spring onions, shallots. All I have is uh, some leeks, which I bought at the local farmer market, and that's been lasting me for ages. So a little bit of garnish, just give a bit more of a fresh onion zing taste. Now, done this in the reverse direction. That's gonna have some tomato on top. There we have it. And of course, some baby spinach. Oh, there is really no delicate way to put this. So I'm just gonna try my best to balance it on. Ooh. There we go. Grab a few more handful. Throw it on top. Alright. Ooh, where did that go? That there. goes back into the oven for a final five minutes of hot air blasting to wilt all the vegetables and warm up the tomato a bit. Alright, grip the tray. Back in it goes. Close it up. And double fan force. Turn up for another five minutes. And uh, it will be ready in no time at all. Yay! It's done. So, oven's cooked. I'm going to open it up. Oh my god, it is sizzling hot. Literally sizzling hot like crazy. I better make sure I don't burn my hands getting it out of the oven. Ooh, look at that. It is smoking yummy good. Ooh. Right. I'm going to put it to the side while I try and plate up because it is absolutely smoking. And that grilled cheese smell on it is so delicious. Plate. Hopefully I don't spill everything. Made it up. Ooh, it's stuck there at the bottom. I'm going to get that. Hopefully you have some good baking paper. Get up the side. And do this. There we go. Oop. That's one plate. Okay. Absolutely yummy. Move that out of the way. Plate up the other one. Right, stay right there. Okay. Plate down. Get the second plate over. Lifts up. Ooh. There we have it folks, really nice zapakanki, straight out of the oven, piping hot, and I'm going to add the pizza resistance, a bit of garlic mayo, or garlic aioli, just a 
layer it on. Ready? There we go. Now, people also add some ketchup or tomato sauce over top of that as well. But that for me is already it. The pizza resistance. We have it. Delicious. Oh, it's so hot. I'm just, I'm absolutely amazing. Oh my god, look at that. Oh. Anyway, have any comments, tips, how you like your Zappa Kanki, write it down in the comment below. And um, I would love to hear it. Or if it's your first time trying it out and making it and you enjoy it, click the like, link, and subscribe. And let me know if you'd like to try out some more different recipes out there. And we'll give it a go. All right. Catch you later, folks.